Hello. It's my first tumor tricks. Um, Sola and Jaden, are either of you writing exams at the moment or tests? Hello, welcome guys. Just gonna give um I'm just gonna give everyone two minutes to start joining, but um this is the first question we're gonna start on. So if you have your pen and paper and calculator ready, you can start trying working on this question. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait two minutes while we give everyone a chance to join. I'll write the formulas, um, the two big ones, just in case you don't have them. I'll write them up here just to help you as you work through some of them today. Yeah. Okay, those of you who have just joined, um, you can get started on the question that's on the board at the moment. I've put the present value and future value formulas up at the top, just because those are the two long ones. I recommend you write them down somewhere because you're going to be using both of them today in the lesson. Um, and I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes for a few more people to join, and then we will start talking about this first question and make our way through it. Cool. Okay, so it's five. We are on our last lesson of financial maths. I can't believe it. I'm very sad to be saying goodbye to you by the end of today. Um, but we are going to be focusing on past paper questions in this lesson. And the reason we're doing that is because it's all fine and well like knowing which formula to use when we're talking about a specific thing. But when they all mix together like this, you really have to read the question carefully to know what's going on. So I've just put the two formulas that are big and long up at the top. Please write them down on a piece of paper so that you've got them with you for um, this whole lesson. And then we're going to go through each of these questions sort of step by step. I want a lot of this to be you working on your own and then us just kind of going through the answers afterwards. But if at any point you have a question, please ask if you're worried you're using the wrong formula, just send me a message or unmute and ask if you want to double check a value like I or N, put it in the comments. I'm happy to help you along the way. Okay, so the first question we're looking at, it just says John takes a loan of 320,000 Rand. The bank charges him an interest rate of 10,9% per annum compounded monthly. He plans to pay off the loan over 11 years in fixed monthly payments. Calculate his monthly repayments. So that would be out of four marks. Basically, your first line that you're going to be writing will be worth three of the marks, and your final answer will be worth one. I'm just I'm going to give those of you who joined just at five to give this a go. There's no tricks in this question. It's all straightforward. So as long as you choose the right formula, you should be fine. Just gonna pull up that chat just in case any of you have questions on there.
I see Paige, you have a question. Okay, let's have a look at this first question. So, can you let me know in the comments before I do anything? So just write a quick no, answer in there. Oh, okay. Um, can you just let me know in the comments which formula we're going to use for this question and tell me what keyword you saw that helped you know which formula to use. So just, you can say PV or FV and then which word in the question helped you know which one to use. Just write your answers in the comments for me. Beautiful. Nice. Yes, yes. All right. Yes. I'm excited. Okay. It's definitely present value. And it's because we're seeing this word loan over here. Well, now I'm covering away the loan. Okay. That loan is telling us it's a present value situation. And so we are absolutely putting it into the present value formula. So let's put it in. And then I'm going to show you exactly where your marks would be. So you can get an idea of what you would get out of four if you made a mistake. So we're going to have 320,000. That is our present value. That's our loan. That's going to be equal to X, which is what we're trying to find. One minus one plus 10,9% compounded monthly to the power of, and you could have written this as negative 11 times 12 if you wanted to, or if you had actually worked that out, you could have said negative 132. So whichever one of those you used is great. And all of that is over our interest rate of 10,9% over 12. Okay, so for this, your first mark is for actually having your present value formula. So if you put it into the present value formula, you get a mark automatically, you identified the correct formula. Your second mark is for getting the correct interest rate. So having 10,9% over 12. And your third mark here would be either having the negative 132 or the negative 11 times 12. Okay, so if you're at that point, you've got three out of the four marks. Then when we're putting this into our calculator and we're trying to find X, we're going to say 320,000 and we're going to divide that by everything over here. And we should get an answer of X is equal to 4,171 Rand and four cents. And that would be our fourth mark. Can I get an idea of how many people got four out of four? Or if you didn't get four out of four, what you landed up getting. So one out of four, two out of four, three out of four. Just give me an idea of where we're at. Cool. Nice. Okay. Thanks for your answers, guys. Nice. Look at these fours. It's glorious. I also really like the threes. The three is make me happy. Remember, the cool thing with financial maths is that if we have the right formula and we know how to put everything in correctly, that's where the bulk of our marks are. So if we make a mistake on our calculator, it's not the end of the world. All right, let's have a look at the second part of this question. Second part is calculate the balance outstanding on the loan after seven years. Now, I'm not going to write the whole thing because I want you to think about this as if you're in a test situation, but I want you to think about what we spoke about in our last lesson. Find your A. Find your FB and then know that your balance is your A minus your FB. That's my hint to you. Okay, so have a look at the question. Again, this one is out of four marks. And remember, if you have questions along the way, don't feel scared to unmute and ask or to type me a, a message. It's also totally fine.
Um, okay, so in this case, P would not be that. Your P would be your actual loan. So your P would be the 320,000 for your A when you're sorting this out, because P is always going to be X. <laughs> that sounded ridiculous. P is not always going to be X. What you figured out here as X, oh, hello, that X value is X. So 4,171 Rand is X. We can't move it into a different place. Hopefully that helps a bit. I'm not giving you in because otherwise I'm doing all the hard work for you. If you want to check anything, please feel free. You can write it in the comments. So if you're stressing that you like spending all this time and then you're not putting in the right things, I'm here. Don't worry. Does anyone need more time? If you do, can you just use an emoji with the little hands up and use that emoji so I can get an idea? Okay, no worries. Thank you. Okay, let's get going. Let's just do this step by step. I'm going to show you exactly where your marks are worth. So let's go. First step, we're looking at your A value. So A, our P is 320,000. One plus our interest rate, which is 10,9% compounded monthly. And our N value is seven years, but I'm making 12 payments each year. So I could write that as seven times 12, or if you wanted to, you could just work that out and say that that would be 84. Okay, so that's what your A would look like. Then we would look at our FV. So for FV, just moving things around on this side. For FV, we would say our X value, which was our X, so 4, 1, 7, 1, and 4 cents. And then we have 1 plus our interest rate compounded monthly to the same N value, so to the power of 84 minus 1, close brackets, all over our interest rate of 10,9% over 12. Okay, so those would be our two big things. And we could work those out on our calculator. I'll put those values in now. And then our balance is going to be our A minus our FV. But the reason I haven't just put these values in on the calculator just yet is because this is where a bulk of your marks are. First thing is that if you have the correct N value for both of them, so it has to be the same for both, you get a mark. So if you have that 84 in both, you've already got a mark. Then if you have the correct interest rate here, you would have gotten a mark there as well. So we're already sitting on two marks. The third mark would be if you've been doing the present value formula way, which some of your teachers may have taught you, you would have gotten a mark for putting it into the present value. And if you did it this way, you would have gotten a mark for having your A and F B. So it depends on which way you've done it. Okay, so let's just go through what these answers would be. This A, so you're not actually getting an answer for this A. It's just there 
for you to work things out. So 944,3444. And this FV is 522256, comma. Oh goodness, my numbers are going everywhere. I'm trying to write in a really weird way. Okay, and so our balance is going to be that A minus our FV, which gives us 161687,5433. Okay, but when we're working on our balance, obviously it's money. And so we would need to round this off to five, five, and we would make it rands. And that over there would be our fourth mark. Okay, so let's get an idea for this question where we were sitting mark wise. So look at where you're at one, two, three, or four out of four. Um, and then if you could just give me an idea, that would be great. So this is looking at balance of a loan. These questions are tough. So don't, don't stress if you're struggling with some of them. Cool. Three is a really good mark for this question. Also three, nice. Yay, Benedict. Nice. Okay. No, you won't get penalized for not writing the round sign. Some of your teachers may tell you that because it's like a personal pet peeve that if you're dealing with financial maths, we want rands, they're not going to take a mark off for it. They will penalize you for not rounding off to two decimal places over here because it's money. You're welcome. Okay, cool. Let's move on. So now you should have an idea of what you were getting out of um, eight marks for that point, which is like a cool idea to just get an idea. Remember finance is about 15 marks in your final exam. So you know what you're dealing with. Okay, this question is a long one. It's three parts. So we've got 2.1, 2.2 and 2.3. I'm just gonna talk about the first part and then I'm gonna let you start sort of dealing with one. The cost of a bus is 1.2 million rand. Now, remember whenever you see million, that means that there would be six zeros. So if I was writing this as a number, that would be one, two, zero, 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 because three, six, four million. It is expected that the value of this bus will depreciate on a reducing balance. So I want you to think about what formula that means when you see that. And it will reduce to... 491,520 rand in four years' time. The price of a new bus is expected to increase by 15% per annum. Now, when we're talking about increasing over years, that's talking about inflation. And so I want you to think when that question comes, what formula that would mean. Okay, 2.1, calculate the percentage annual rate of depreciation of the bus. So we are looking for I, go. Read through the question again, find your important details, and then find me I. And when you have an answer, chuck it in the comments. So be careful about which formula you're using. Write down your grocery list on the side. What are the different things? What's A? What's P? What's I? What's N? Find what you're looking for and then give me the answer in the comments. And I want the answer as a percentage.
If your answer is coming out as a decimal, don't panic. Remember that you would then want to times that by 100 to get it to be a percentage. So like if you have 0, 0,4, then that would be 40%. So if your answer is a decimal, then you're definitely on the right track. Oh, it's, it's close. I think you're just not multiplying it by the right, by the right value. Was your, was your answer 0, 0,2? Yeah, so then that would be 20%. Yeah, exactly. So you had the right answer. You just, when you have 0, 0,2, you then need to multiply it by 100. No? Why are you apologizing? You did the right thing. Okay. So let's have a look at um, what this one would look like. So as soon as we see that it's reducing balance, we need to think, okay, we're dealing with A is equal to P1 minus I to the power of N. Okay. A is what it is worth in four years time. So that's 491520. P is what it's worth now. So 1.2 million. I is what we're looking for. And N is in four years time. So we're just gonna put that straight into our calculator and we should get a value. So, I mean, well, let me just put this into our formula so you can get an idea of where things would be. 1.2 million. One minus I, which is what we're seeking to the power of four. Now, when we manipulate this, the first thing we would do is we would divide this 491520 by the 1.2 million. Okay. And then we would be left with one minus I to the power of four. So we would root that to the power of four. We would minus one and divide that all by a negative, and that will equal I. So we would get 0, 0,2, which is I. Therefore, I is 20%. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. 2.2, .2. some of you may have already started it. If you finished with 2.1 quickly, that's fine. Let's just read through it. If the bus needs to be replaced in four years time, so that means I'm wanting to buy a new bus in four years time. Calculate the value of the sinking fund. Remember, a sinking fund is a like a savings fund that a company puts in place so that they will have enough money in certain number of years in order to replace something that they need to. So generally machinery that needs to be set up to pay for the new bus. Assume that the old bus will be traded in at its depreciation value of 491520. Okay, so basically we need to figure out what is a new bus gonna cost in four years time. And then if we trade in our old bus, how much would we still have to pay? So use that to try and guide you. Remember, if I want to know something's worth in the future, then I have to take into account inflation. So think about which percentage in the original question we want to be using in this one. Can I go? Just let me know if, if anyone needs a little bit more time. Just uh, use an emoji or you can let me know in the comments. Just, okay, no worries. I'm liking that answer. I'm just missing a second decimal place because it's money. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Okay, so let's think about what this would do. First thing is we have to think about what would a bus cost in four years time? So in four years, that means I'm working with inflation, okay? So I'm working with the compound interest formula of inflation. My A is what I'm trying to find. My P is what the bus costs now, and A is what it would cost in four years' time. So my P is actually 1.2 million rand, okay? One plus I. Now, your instinct might be to use this I that we've just calculated, but that's a different I. That was working out the depreciation of the bus. We're looking at what the price of a new bus would be. And in the question, it said that would be increasing by 15% per annum. So this I is going to be 15%. And our number of years is four. So we're going to chuck that straight into our calculator. And we should get a total of 2098807 and 50 cents. Okay, so that's what a new bus would cost in four years time. But they've told us that we will be trading in our bus for 491,520 Rand. So we are now going to take this value, 8807 and 50 cents, and we're going to subtract what we would be trading in. And so we would still have to pay more than one and a half million Rand in four years' time if we wanted to buy. A new bus. Okay, so for anyone who's feeling a little bit confused about this, let's just work through what these numbers mean. This is what our bus would be worth in four years' time, considering inflation. This is what we would get for the bus that we had originally bought, and we are now trading in after those four years. And so this is how much money. I would still need after those four years to purchase a new bus. Okay, cool. I didn't show you where these marks were, I just realized right now. So in 2.1, it was out of three marks. Our final mark would be the 20%. And then you would get a mark for knowing that it's the um, reducing balance formula, so you having the right formula, and then a mark for subbing in things correctly. So it's called a sub mark, like a subbing in mark, making sure that you've put the values where they need to be. So your A is where it needs to be, your P is where it needs to be, and then you get a mark for your answer. So that's the first three marks. Um, it's, it's difficult to say, but because some markers are very strict about the two decimal place rule, and sometimes they're a bit more lenient. So my, my gut is to tell you rather err on the side of caution and rather make it 50 cents. Because you would never go to a shop and see something that is 1,5 Rand. It will always say 1 Rand 50. So think about just what makes more sense financially. Okay, so the first one is this, where your three marks are. And the second one is also three marks. So you would get a mark for basically working out your, at least to have the formula for your inflation and making sure you have the correct percentage there. Then you would have a mark for acknowledging that you're minusing the trade in value of the previous bus and then a mark for your final answer. So at the moment we're out of six, but there's another three marks to this question. And then I'm gonna ask you to tell me what you got out of nine. So just keep in mind where you're at at this moment. Okay. All right, the last question, we only need to have question two to help us as we're working through question 2.3. Calculate the amount that must be invested monthly, so the monthly repayments, into a sinking fund, so into a savings account, to cover the replacement cost of the bus in four years' time if the interest paid by the financial institution is 9% per annum compounded monthly. Sorry, I have the hiccups. I don't know if you guys can hear. I apologize if I'm hiccuping in your ears. Think about which formula it means if it's a sinking fund. 
about what N would be, think about what I would be. That's all the information you need. When you have an answer, you can put it in the comments. Let's see if anyone gets spot on and let's see if anyone was able to get nine out of nine for this question. That would be pretty cool. My answer is like, oh wait, let me see. Oh no, 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 no. I, <laughs> I was combining your two answers. I can say for definite that my answer is the same as one of the two answers in the comments. So I guess we'll see. Okay. Okay. Well, I think just by by the number of answers coming in, we're all on the same page here, which is beautiful. Okay. Sinking fund is oh, am I on draw? Sinking fund is telling me that it is something that I'm looking for in the future. So there's a future value annuity. Okay. So let's just think about what that would be. We want to know future value. We need to find out what X is. And we've got one plus our interest rate is 9% compounded monthly. Our N is four years time, but it's compounded monthly. So that's to the power of 48. And we're subtracting one. And this is all over 9% uh, over 12. And our future value is what we need. And that's this value over here. So the 1607287 and 50 cents. And we've done quite a few of these questions now. So again, you would say this value on the left divided by all of that on your calculator. And you should get an answer of X is equal to 27,942 Rand and 76 cents. So well done to those of you who got to that point. Let's just talk about where these marks would be. Again, you're going to have a mark for having the future value annuity formula and for subbing it incorrectly. You would get a mark for your final answer. And then in this case, you would probably get a mark for having both the correct I and the correct N. So if one of those are wrong, then you would lose that mark. Okay, so think about where you were at. Now this question in total was out of nine. So the first part was those first three marks. 
So just have a look if you need to have a look again. Second question was also three marks. And then that third question was three marks. And so in total, it was out of nine. Let's get an idea in the comments where we were sitting at out of nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine out of nine. Oh my goodness, a nine out of nine. That's my party face. Six out of nine, awesome. Eight, also really great. Oh, I rhymed. Awesome. These are really, these are good. Nice, 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 nice. Six is also great. Cool. And you know what? It could even be more than six because sometimes you get continued accuracy marks. So if you've made a mistake somewhere and then you've made something correct later, you may have gotten an extra mark. So awesome. Cool. Yay. I'm feeling very optimistic. Okay. <laughs> question three. Question three is also a three-part question. And in total, it is actually out of 11 marks. So this would make up like the bulk of your paper if these questions were together. So Ms. Wakeland wants to take out a loan to help her buy a flat. She pays the loan off over a period of 20 years and is charged interest at 14% per annum compounded monthly. If she can afford a monthly repayment of 7,500 Rand, determine the value of the loan that she can apply for. Think about your formula, put it into your formula. This is a nice, easy three marks. Everyone should be able to get three out of three here. Yes, nice. Oh, almost. It's the decimal again. Because the third number is a five. The decimal is 215. And so that changes that second decimal place. <laughs> These decimals are going to haunt you. <laughs> nice, Jaden. Yes. Look at these answers. Beautiful. Okay. So I can see it. So I'm, I'm just, I'm going to go through this one quite quickly because I can see that we, we're getting where we need to go to. Because it's a loan and there's monthly payments, we know it's a present value annuity. So we're trying to find what that loan amount would be. She's making payments of seven and a half thousand Rand. We've got one minus one plus 14% compounded monthly to the power of you could write negative 20 times 12, or you could work out what that actually is, all over your interest rate of 14% over 12. And you should get a value of 6,03,126. And then on your calculator, it would be comma 215. And that five is going to make this decimal comma 2, 2. Okay, so if we got that, we are in three mark territory, which is awesome. 
first mark here would, again, you would probably get a mark combined for having the correct I and the correct N, a mark for subbing into the present value formula, and then a mark for your answer. Okay. Beautiful. Let's move down. I've been waiting for this question because I've been missing, I've been missing these ones. She decides to take out a loan of 600,000. So she's taken, she's chosen a different loan and she manages to pay 10,000 rand per month instead. How many monthly payments will it take her in order to pay off the loan? So if I'm wanting to know how many months I'm looking for in, and that means I care about logs. write something down here to help you. I can write a lot. I'm just going to write a little bit. a very similar answer but my decimals are a little bit different to yours so I'm just going to double check mine um because everything else is the same so let me just double check my one on this side did you round off an answer somewhere in the middle mm. Mm. Mm -mm. it's like it it's it yeah it there we go that's better Oh, I see. So you were actually trying to, okay, yeah. So I think were you trying to round off that 0, 0,798 into the 81? Okay, so the answer just below it, you'll see it's comma 80. That's exactly what we would do because the 8 would change the 9, which would change the 7. So it would become 80 but it doesn't become 81, even though that number is also increasing. Basically, it's just saying that that 79 is going to move up to 80. So we're moving it up by a unit. But good, these are great answers. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put it into the formula. And I'm gonna show you a few steps here along the way, and then we'll see how we go. So she takes out a loan 
of 600,000, which means we're dealing with a present value annuity. Okay, so our loan, 600,000. That's equal to her monthly payment, which is 10,000 Rand. Okay, and she's got one minus one plus her interest rate, which was 14% compounded monthly to the power of negative N, because we don't know how many months it is, all over her interest rate of 14% over 12. Now, if we've just done that, then we've actually already got two marks, which is great. Okay, so our first mark is for subbing things incorrectly into the um, present value formula. And then our second mark would probably be having the correct interest rate over there. Okay, it depends on the marker. So those marks may be in slightly different places, but most of the time these are sort of consistent. Your next step would be a rearranging of sorts. And so mine landed up simplifying to three over 10, which was equal to one plus 14% over 12 to the power of negative N. That's what mine simplified down to. Again, we don't really get marks for these middle steps. We get a mark for putting it into the log form though. So log of one plus 14% over 12 to three over 10 is equal to negative N, which means N is equal to 103,80. You can actually leave it as 798, but if we wanted to round up to two decimal places, let's say 80. And so now we need to be careful because they wanted to know in the question, um, how many monthly payments would it take? So now we need to be careful what we're meaning by this. This means 103 payments of 10,000 Rand and one smaller payment. And that remember is the final payment and that's, is because of that little decimal place there. Okay, so marks, getting it into your log form, getting, a mar uh, getting your final answer at that step there. So those are your four marks. So subbing into PV, having the correct I, getting it into log form, getting your final answer out of four. Now, naturally, the question that follows this, because you've just seen that there's a decimal, is now I want to know her final payment, okay? So I'm just gonna write it up here, a few important things that you would need to know. First of all, we know that the loan was 600,000 Rand. I'm just writing all of this because you would have had this all in front of you at the same time. Her interest rate was 14% compounded monthly. The number of payments that she's made, she's made 103 payments of 10,000 Rand and one smaller, that should help you. Um, and I think that's all you're gonna need. Yeah, that's all you're gonna need. So now think about final payment. Remember that my last, last hint, when we're dealing with final payment, we're wanting to find balance after this guy, essentially, last big payment. And then we want to add one month of compound interest because the balance immediately after that big payment of 10,000 Rand, that balance still sits in the account for a month before I make my final payment. And so I need to take into account that I'm gonna have a month of interest before I make that final payment. So that's all the information you should need for 3.3. And this one's also out of four marks.
you're feeling good with your answer, you can chuck it into the comments when you're done. I know that there's lots to do in this question. There's a whole bunch of different steps. So don't worry if it's taking time. So my balance is going to be my A minus my FB. Okay, we're going to start there. Now my A, okay. Well, it's a, it's a good go. Okay, our A would be our 600,000 Rand, which is our loan. And then we have that at 14% compounded monthly for 103 payments. Our FB, so I'm now just doing this in one line, okay? But obviously you can do them separately, don't panic. Our FB, our X value was 10,000 Rand, that's what she's paying each month. One plus 14% over 12, again to the power of 103 minus one, or over 14% over 12. I've just done it in one line. You could definitely do it in A, FB, and then subtract, that's fine, okay? I like to do it in one line like this because then I don't make mistakes with my decimals when I subtract. So it's a personal preference. You don't have to do that. Okay. And so I got a total value in this case of 1973659,846. Okay. So that was after my 103rd payment, that was how much had been paid off. So now, oh no, sorry. That's <laughs> writing my FB amount there. My balance was 7902,046. Gosh, that would have been quite sad if that had been our balance after 103 payments. Okay, so this is what our balance was after 103 payments. Now we need to take into account that it's sitting in the account for another month of interest. Oh my goodness. Kanya, that answer is 100% right. Well done. Okay, we now I'm just going to move up here. So we're going to take that 7902,046. We're going to keep all our decimals because we haven't got our final answer. One plus our interest rate, which was 14% compounded monthly to the power of one because it's just sitting there in one month. And we get a total of 7994,24. And I hope you feel like a real badass if you got that right because that is really a hard sum. Nice job. I'm just going to leave this here for anyone who still needs it. I'm sorry it goes all over the place. I definitely did not leave enough space for myself. Okay, so remember when we're doing a final payment, we're always looking at our balance after that last big payment, that last monthly payment, which generally the question will lead you towards. So normally you would have had to find that in the previous question. And then we just have to take into account that it's sitting in the account for another month. Excuse me, so, ma'am. Yes. Um, um, once you are done with question 3.3, would you please re-explain question 3.2? Because I'm kind of struggling to find the 3 over 10. Sure. No problem. No problem at all. We can go through that. Next. Thank you. Ma'am. Okay. So let's just have a look at how these Thank marks you. go. You're welcome. So, sure. Okay. I'll, I, I will help you. Okay. So let's just have a look at this. Um, firstly, your final 
answer, you would get a mark there for doing that compound interest and getting what you get. You would have gotten a mark for having your A minus your FV. And then you would have gotten marks for having the correct I and the correct N. So that would have been your four marks over there. Okay, so if you had put this into the present value formula and then added your month of interest, the marks would have been in similar places. For So for going into present value, for subbing in correctly, for having the correct I and N, and then for having your answer. Okay, I'm just going to quickly go over the previous question. And then we're actually going to have to sadly call it a night because our time has just disappeared, which is very sad. Okay, so let's just have a look at how this 3 over 10 came about. Grab your calculator for me. I'll do it with you on the side as well. We're going to take, let me just get a, a different color going on here. We're going to take our 600,000. And we are going to start by multiplying that by the 14% over 12. Okay, and that should give you 7,000. Then we want to move this over. So we're going to divide that by 10,000. And that gives us 7 over 10. So you should all have 7 yes, over 10 on um, your Great. I okay. <laughs> okay. Then we want to move that 1 over. So I'm going to subtract 1. But now I'm left with oh, negative 1 over 10. Okay. Yay. I forgot about the one. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, ma'am. No problem. That's what I'm here for. Guys, I'm so sad. This is our last lesson and I have to say goodbye to you. But I've had a lot of fun. And I hope that um, I hope that you've learned some stuff with financial maths. I hope you feel a bit more confident with it. And you at least sort of get an idea of which questions to use when. And just remember when you see them in your exam, remember like the, the things that we've spoken about. Remember the tips and tricks and hopefully it all comes together. But I've had a lot of fun with you. So I'm going to hand over to Coco. You're breaking all our hearts here. We're not going to see you for a while again. No, I'm going to miss him. <laughs> um, well, guys, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, this has been so much fun. It's been amazing to have you guys with us. Um, hopefully, we'll see you guys in our next course that we're going to have. Um, where they'll be going through paper one. I believe that was either going to be teacher to push or teacher Lee, but they'll be showing you guys how to answer the whole of paper one. Um, I'm just going to go through, you know, our last little rigmarole here. Okay. Um, this is the schedule that we've gone through so far. This is the very last lesson that we have, lesson six, which was our exam type questions. Um, and the last thing that we're going to ask you guys to do is please go try the quiz, but not the first quiz. Remember, we had two quizzes. Um, after quiz number four, we did quiz number one, and this time we're going to ask you guys to please go do finance quiz two. Um, just to kind of tie together everything that we've learned so far, uh, see if Ms. G has taught you guys anything new, and see if you guys can actually get <laughs> all of that correct. I, I, I can. She obviously has taught you guys a lot. <laughs> 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 okay um two last things that we'd really like from you guys is um we're going to be running a workshop um now i've been asked to read this so please bear with me guys um, i'm not very good with uh, reading things right off so um just hold on for me the message says uh oh my word okay it says, uh, we will start interactive workshops on Friday, the 13th of August, led by qualified professionals in the field of psychology. In it, we will focus on Matt's anxiety, as we have noticed that a large number of learners struggle with feelings of helplessness and dread when they are given mathematical problems. If this is not dealt with properly, their confidence and performance in maths will be greatly affected. So if you feel like every time you have to sit for... Um, a test or an exam regarding maths, if you feel like you're about to have a mini heart attack, then maybe this is something you guys should look into um, coming to. It is on the 13th. It starts on the 13th. So it'll be this coming Friday, tomorrow at six. And then there's one again on Monday and there's another one next Friday. So it'll probably be around the time when you guys don't quite have classes. So you're all welcome to 
to come and join in. And I don't know if some of you will probably know uh, Elzan and Nikayla. They are one of the great mentors that we have here at Watobi. Okay, last thing I'm going to ask of you guys, if you guys would just fill out our survey for us about how this class has been. I know we're going to get five stars across the board. Don't even be lying, guys. We know this is a great class and we really enjoyed having you guys with us. Um, and that is it. Um, unfortunately, that is this is the last you're going to be seeing of us for finance. Hopefully we'll see you guys again in another class. Um, thank you. Thank you guys so much. You are basically, without you guys, we wouldn't have a job because you are basically what we do. Okay, if we could all unmute and just say bye-bye to Ms. G for the last time. And thank you so much, Ms. G, for all your hard work. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you very much, Ms. G. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye, mom. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.